next speaker here. It's actually a one-on-one conversation. Let's bring on Javier Haas, who is the managing editor of Benzing and Cannabis. Javier, there he is. Uh, you're on mute, my man. And tell us who you're talking to today. Man, we have an amazing, amazing guest. I mean, many people might not know this, but there are companies in the healthcare sector working with psychedelics. Yes, you heard that right, psychedelics. And today we will be talking with Robert or Rob Barrow. He's the CEO of Mind Medicine or MindMed. This company trades on the NASDAQ of all, you know, of all exchanges under the ticker MNMD and is valued at almost a billion dollars. This is, again, a psychedelic company. How surreal is all this? Uh, what a time to be alive. Let's get Rob on. There he is. What a yeah. time to be alive. Rob, welcome Absolutely. to the Small Cap Healthcare Conference. Thank you so much Thanks for joining so much, us. Thank you here. Thank you. I know. I appreciate being here. So, I mean, just <laughs> let's get right into it because this is surreal to me, right, in, in so many ways. So can you explain a little bit about, about psychedelics? How are they mainstream medicine? You know, how is it different from just dropping acid in college or whatever, right? Yeah, no, I think it's a, a great question and incredibly important for everyone to, to understand the differences. I think um, most, most everyone knows about the use of, of psychedelics uh, recreationally, but those who don't know the history, you know, LSD, for instance, was discovered by, by San, a scientist at Sandoz, Albert Hoffman. And so you know, a, a lot of historical research has been done in this area. And certainly where we're going is, is studying uh, psychedelics in a, in a completely novel way, in a, in a medical environment where you have uh, trained therapists who can deliver the therapy, who can oversee the safety and, and ultimately give psychosocial support uh, through the delivery of care. And, and really, we've seen just a revolution over the last several years uh, FDA has been incredibly supportive. We're seeing growing support with, with NIH and just an, an incredible abundance of organizations entering the space and, and ultimately a really great opportunity to bring these forwards as new therapies. And uh, I, I think it's really worth pointing out too that there's been a relative lack of research in, in this drug class over the last several decades because of geopolitical kind of concerns, mm -hmm. not scientific ones. And so we see it as an enormous opportunity to, to really apply rigorous scientific uh, in, in inquiry and investigation of pharmaceutical scientific practices to bring the classic psychedelics to market, but also improved iterations of these products uh, in second, third generation forms. You know, it's super interesting. I remember I was I was sharing the story with you a few days ago, right? Uh, maybe four years ago, I, I went to lunch with this guy in New York and he was wearing a suit. He, he looks like completely normal, right? Like just <laughs> guy. And he told me psychedelics are an expert thing, like cannabis or whatever. And I was like, not at all. I don't see that happening. He was completely right. Right now, you are the CEO of a billion dollar psychedelics company. Um, and and it's, it, it's, it's really becoming a real thing. So what is MindMed doing, right? Can you tell us a little bit about MindMed, um, how it comes to be, uh, a little bit about what you're working on, what you hope to accomplish, who your supporters are. Yeah, absolutely. I'm, I'm always happy to tell the, the MindMed story. So MindMed was the first publicly traded psychedelic company initially listed on the NEO exchange. And then earlier this year, as you mentioned, we, we uplisted to the NASDAQ. Uh, really, our focus, again, is to build a CNS-focused pharmaceutical company with a, a real you know, opportunity in this drug class and psychedelic drug class. We, we just see a, a remarkable background of evidence. And we want to bring these forward, again, as, as first generation, second generation, and third generation psychedelic products as we think of them. So first generation being the classic psychedelics, ones that everyone's heard of, psilocybin and, and LSD and, and the like. Uh, second generation are, are maybe innovative dosage forms and delivery platforms that we can uh, administer these in more widely accessible ways that, that don't require uh, uh, hallucinations, for instance. And then we think of third generation products as, as you know, completely novel uh, new chemical entities that we can bring into the pipeline through good medicinal chemistry and then iterate on the classic psychedelics and that knowledge, but bring new products to market and ultimately have this growing field of, of assets that we can bring forward into the longer longer term and, and be really long-term value creation for us and for the in, entire uh, pharmaceutical industry. We are centered around four main disease areas, and, and all of these are supported by some historical evidence with psychedelics. Uh, most of the focus recently has been on psychedelics like psilocybin and psychiatry, depression, anxiety. 
we certainly have a focus there in psychiatry, but we're also looking outside of psychiatry and into treating addiction and, and use disorders and treating pain conditions and, and treating neurological conditions. And so we're, we're really building an organization in the breadth of a pipeline that has uh, considerable opportunity outside of just psychiatry and the classic use cases. That's super interesting. And, and, and the um, approach that you take is also very, you know, like pharma-like, right? Um, I, I know you like to say something like, you know, Myman is the pharma company for the psychedelic sector, right? And, and it has to be with, the, you know, a little bit to do with the team and the approach, right? Can you elaborate on that and, and how, how this approach, uh, you know, makes you, makes you special, makes you different? And you ultimately, you know, ended up, you know, resulting in you being the, the first publicly traded psychedelics company in the world. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we are, as you said, building a pharmaceutical company and we've been recruiting uh, top talent out of pharma, out of, out of big pharma, for instance, AstraZeneca and Santa Fe and, and Janssen. We've been really building a, a, an unmatched team in this sector. And really, while there's just a, a ton of historical research from, from the academic sphere on psychedelics, it really takes uh, an organization that, that knows the landscape. And and really, when you zoom out and you say you don't look at everything through the lens of psychedelics, but you say in the broader world, how can these therapies be brought to market and how can they ultimately be deployed and, and scaled? That requires an entirely different approach and lens than, than what maybe has been done historically. So we are, are very much evidence driven. We are, we are building a, we have a management team and are building an organization that is, is continually growing, uh, that is built by drug developers, that is, is driving this through standard regulatory processes. We have frequent engagement with FDA. We have uh, that long-term vision to really roll these out at scale and ultimately bring them through the regulatory process, which is a, a very technical and, and challenging uh, operation that we're, we're building here. And, and we just see an enormous potential and, and it really requires that level of expertise and, and drive to make this come to reality. It would be a shame if the opportunity were missed because teams aren't built around them that actually know the drug landscape and have the experience of the pharmaceutical industry to bring these products to market. Yeah, and well, you mentioned, you know, regulations, the FDA, that must not be simple, right? We're talking about certain substances that are still controlled by the DEA. So like, what does the, 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 the landscape look like from a regulatory perspective? And, and like, how are you approaching the FDA going like, okay, we want to research acid for depression right we want to research psilocybin for for certain conditions like it, how is that approach and how how can you do it yeah i i think it, it for it would be surprising to many that fda is so receptive uh, yeah. but i think they can just really be applauded for for what they do and, and I, we as an organization and, and, and i personally have this tremendous respect for, for fda and everyone that, that works there uh, we've we've seen them be objective, which is what all of us should be asking for, right? We, we, we're not asking for any passes, we're not asking for any shortcuts, and we're not trying to do this uh, in, in what is historically done with cannabis. We're not trying to take this through you know, a, a non-regulated or, or legislative process state by state. We're taking this in the front door of FDA, going in saying, here's our plan. You know, I, I've had the fortune of going uh, and sitting down at, at DEA headquarters to discuss this. I've had this, several opportunities to engage with FDA around this topic. And what we've seen is that they've been really forward thinking about it. I think that they see an enormous opportunity and are, are being rigorous scientists and, and medical professionals to really take a, a hard look at the, the drug class. Again, no one's getting any any shortcuts, but that's all we can ask for is, is objectivity and, and overall openness to, to providing the evidence of safety and effectiveness and ultimately bringing these products to market through that approval process. Indeed. Um, and, you know, it's, it's, it's all, almost seems like, like working with psychedelics for you is, is coincidental, right? It's, it's a pharma approach or, or is it not? I mean, what's, what, what, what do you feel is, is the situation there? Why do you end up with psychedelics and, and how does this fit into, right? Like we're in a healthcare conference, a, a mainstream, right regular healthcare conference, right? right? So how does this play in? Yeah, well, I, you know, I, th I think it's one of those, those situations where uh, political climate over, uh, historical political climate has uh, ultimately overruled rigorous science. And, and ultimately that's what we as an industry and, and we as an organization are here to do is, is that rigorous scientific investigation and 
Um, you know, we think this fits very, very nicely into the framework for mental health. I mean, there's been relatively little innovation over the, the past several decades in mental health treatments. There certainly have been some, but we see a number of patients with inadequate relief and the, the overall psych psychiatric community and medical community more broadly is, is very open to the potential here. If you can have a, a drug that you can deliver and it has a short activity in the body, it's only present in your body for, for one day, let's say, but then you have clinical benefits that last many weeks or months, that's a really unique treatment paradigm that, that really is different than any other psychiatric drugs or, or many other drugs we have generally. And so when you look at the opportunity, when you look at the historical evidence, it is so compelling. Uh, really, it, it fits perfectly in healthcare. There are certainly challenges that are unique to this because it is a, a you know a bit of a different approach and it requires uh, forward thought and, and really thinking how we can leverage the system that exists and scale it into the broader world. Uh, but again, that, that's ultimately what the pharmaceutical industry is here to do. And what we're here to do as an organization is bring new therapies to market and, and get them out to the public at scale. Are you chatting with doctors at all at this point? Like, do you see them at all open to, to these therapeutic alternatives or are they reluctant? What, what's, what's the situation there? We've seen a, a, an enormous uh, amount of interest from And, and I focus on psychiatry because that's really where this all was sort of reborn several years ago. But even outside of that, I think you can look at, at recent additions to our scientific advisory board and, and recent changes and in, in funding that some of the scientists have, have been receiving. Uh, we just see an enormous interest. There's some medical education conferences that have given form symposia around psychedelic research. And so when we look at psychiatry, Uh, they are, are very much interested in adopting this kind of approach. And, and I've seen, uh, certainly there are some skeptics and, and we're, we're here to, to change their minds with, again, strong data that is compelling and, and will convince uh, everyone of the, the therapeutic opportunity if we're ultimately successful in doing that. But uh, really overall, we've seen a, a, a wide open arms of the medical community to exploring these and, and generating evidence. And what about like from the policy or, or you know side of there's there's a question in the chat, you know, and, and drawing some parallels with with cannabis and saying like Congress won't won't include uh, you know, re reform for psychedelic medicine even for PTSD treatment. So the question they ask pretty fairly is so what hope is there? Like how how will all of this play out in, in your in your view? Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna bring these products. We and, and other organizations. I look at at our colleagues, for instance, at, at Maps, who are developing MDMA for post traumatic stress disorder. Um, you know, they're they're the, the closest to filing an NDA, it, it seems. And um, you know, we we applaud all that they're doing. And, and I think we we look at the the broader industry and wanting to see a lot of success uh, with a number of different compounds, both those in our pipeline, but other, others that are developing other compounds as well. So. Um, You know, what hope is there? It, it, we have to follow the process. I think it's really important that uh, we lean into the regulatory process. We lean into the frameworks that currently exist by trying to sidestep them while it may seem like an attractive short-term option. It really risks, uh, you know, if we are long-term exposed to these, the, the changing winds of, of geopolitics, it, that's a, a broader risk for access to psychedelics long-term. And so, We're going to take these in through the front door again, go through the these difficult and rigorous process that it takes to get drugs approved to establish the safety and effectiveness. And in so doing, we will you know, ensure effectively the longevity of, of access to these therapies and, and have the, the underlying evidence that will require is required to have broader uptake in the, the general community, but also in the medical community. Indeed. And it's not just you and I who are, who are bullish on this sector, as, as Roy mentions in the chat as well. Uh, this was a pick by Kevin O'Leary of Shark Tank as a sector to watch. So you've been warned. <laughs> Let's talk a little bit about MindMed again, MNMD on the NASDAQ. Can you tell us a little bit about your, your, you know, your, your product pipeline, your, you know, your different clinical trials, you know, a, a, a little bit of a deeper dive into your different, you know, uh, products and development and, and what you're hoping to accomplish with each of these trials? Absolutely. I, I like to say we have the, the broadest and, and most compelling clinical pipeline of any organization in the psychedelic space. And we're yes. really excited about what we have it coming in, in the very near term and, and longer term. So 
Uh, one of the, the studies that has, has received the most attention is our LSD program, which we're developing for anxiety disorders. And we're launching a, a relatively large uh, phase two study of LSD and generalized anxiety disorder and, and looking to move that forward uh, into the clinic. So uh, that is, again, one of the, the higher profile psychedelic programs we're developing. But as I mentioned, we, we are somewhat agnostic to whether drugs make you hallucinate. And we have a, a, another compound that is really interesting called 18MC, and it's a derivative of a classic psychedelic called Ibogaine. The problem with Ibogaine that, that some organizations are developing is that it is cardiotoxic. It is a pro-arrhythmic mm -hmm. drug that, that risks people developing uh, cardiac arrhythmias and then in some instances dying from those arrhythmias. And so we have a, a molecule in 18MC that has the same effect on treating uh, opioid use disorder and, and other use disorders in at least in, in rodent models of, of self-administration and preclinical models. Um, but it does not have the same pro-arrhythmic risk. It doesn't have the same cardiovascular risk. So mm -hmm. through good uh, application of med medicinal chemistry and, and pharmaceutical science, we have this third generation psychedelic product, one that is inspired by a classic psychedelic, but has dealt with the underlying issues of that classic psychedelic. And ultimately we see as an enormous opportunity to bring forward into uh, opioid use disorders. So we're, we're finishing up a phase one study of 18MC currently, and then moving that into a clinical trial a phase two clinical trial for opioid withdrawal and, and use disorder ultimately. That's amazing. Um, anything else that you're excited about, you know, and, and you know, what does the future hold for, for MindMed? What do you see in, you know, for the company in terms of organic growth uh, on M&A, on, on potential international expansion, right? Or I, I assume you're thinking about all of this. This is you know, pretty universal uh, in terms of, of, of the need, in terms of the addressable markets, in terms of, of, of the, the development process, right? Absolutely. Yeah, and, and so I, I, I highlighted our, our most advanced programs. We also have a, a phase uh, two study of, of LSD and adult ADHD that we're conducting. And we have a number of, of collaborations in place, one with University Hospital Basel in Switzerland. And there, there we're looking at collaboratively uh, uh, clinical trials of other psychedelic molecules like DMT and mescaline and other interesting approaches to uh, other therapies that are relevant to the delivery of psychedelics. Like we have a study with uh, LSD and, and catanserin that we've referred to as sort of a, a trip ender that, that's being assessed currently. And so uh, through that collaboration, we have a number of opportunities to assess these compounds, both in new indications, but also completely novel compounds that are not in our pipeline that we could ultimately bring into our commercial pipeline if, if we're successful in, in these phase, early phase studies, which we're really optimistic about. And then we have a number, number of other collaborations with medicinal chemistry groups and with formulation groups, uh, looking at either novel delivery platforms or completely novel molecules that are in early stages of, of research and development, but that we ultimately uh, view bringing into the drug pipeline over the next many years. And, and really, again, as we think about the growth of MyMed and who we are as an organization, we're building a pharmaceutical company. And with that comes lead assets that are advancing later into to clinical development, but also an entire pipeline behind it of opportunities that can, uh, can you know, drive development programs and, and new products for, for many years to come. Man, oh man, how exciting. What a time to be alive, as Spencer just said. Rob, where can people reach you? You know, interested investors, whether it's retail, institutional. Yeah, I you know, encourage everyone to, to go to the website, mindmed.co. Uh, we have a, a, an active uh, social media platforms, Twitter, LinkedIn, and um, encourage everyone to, to follow along. I think, again, we're, we're really excited about uh, the developments of MyMed and what we have coming in the, in the near and long future. And uh, thank everyone for all the support we've had to date, but also for, for tuning in and, and watching as we progress here over the next several years. Fantastic. Robert Barrow is the CEO of MindMed, a NASDAQ-traded psychedelics company valued at almost a billion dollars. You can find the stock on the NASDAQ under the ticker MNMD. Robert, thank you so much for joining us. My pleasure. Thanks so much, Javier. All right. Thanks to Rob. Thanks to Javier. Um, yeah, I mean, it's just, it's mind blowing. And it's, it's exactly that. It's yeah. exactly that. Like mind blowing. Yeah. Like, like, can you, I can't even, I'm trying to think like if you, if I told my parents like five years ago, or you told your parents five years ago, you know, like, Hey, you know, in a few years, there's going to be like actual like medical clinical studies on 
the medical uses of forget not even marijuana but uh, but like psychedelics right lsd like they would not believe it i, I wouldn't believe it either frankly what what if i told them i would make a living of it that, that, yeah, again <laughs> that would flip them hey, Cannabis is one thing, but you're going to psychedelics, right? And but it's, I mean, it's real. It's real. There are medical use cases. It's happening. Exactly. Uh, it's and, not and, a question just, of just like just in, in a similar fashion to cannabis, right? Uh, you know, right. without with, you know saving the many differences, you know, we are reconceptualizing, yeah. understanding yeah. from a different perspective how these compounds work, right? Sure. Sure. Yeah, there's an entire generation that's going to grow up and and think of cannabis and psychedelics, um, and 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 their first thought won't will not be, oh my god, you know, it, it's bad. Their first thought will be, oh, like this is a thing that people use for for legit medical reasons, and that, that's fantastic. If you know, it, it works, it works. I mean, that that's all. That's all. The, the proof is in the pudding. So Javier Haas, uh, once again, guys, Javier will be at the Benzinga Cannabis Capital Conference October 14th and 15th. I think those are the dates. Or is it 13th and 14th? Yes. No, 14th, it's 14th and 15th. In At the Marriott Marquis in Times yes. Square, New York City. And I will see you there, Javier. Indeed. We'll be All talking right. cannabis, stocks, investments, science you know policy but overall how to make money off this booming sector and if you want to know more about the cannabis capital conference well just watch this commercial